Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Now, that doesn't do it either, sailor. That was a two-motored plane. Your boy is two hours late. Oh, Carrie will get here. You don't have to worry about him. I'll tell you a secret. I spend my whole life not worrying about Carrie. You like him. Where do you meet him? Blonde, wavy hair and wears a white silk scarf. Is his mustache blonde, too? No mustache. I showed you his picture. Well, there was a mustache in that picture someplace. Uh-uh. Just Carrie Martin in his plane. Here, look. I brought it along. Hey, you drew a mustache on him. <laughs> yeah, and a beard, too. Uh, does it bother you because I knew a man named Carrie Martin before I knew you? Because he sent you a wire from Miami to meet you at a crummy airstrip outside of Havana. Because I had to get up too early and drive you too far. I told you last night you didn't have to come along. But this morning there was a jeep waiting for me, and you were in it. Because the last time you drove the jeep, you came home with the wrong jeep. The time before that... Hey, you two there. What are you doing here? Hello? I asked you a question. What are you doing here? Believe it or not, we're waiting for an airplane. What are you waiting for? Get out of here. We like it here. We'll have to settle down right here. I don't know who you are, but my company has leased this airstrip, and I have full authority. Here comes a plane, Slate. That's four-motored. Your friends is a single-engine job. I can't understand it. Something must have happened. I don't want to have to talk to you two again. Now, take it easy, mister. We're going, not because you say so. Sailor's worried. She might want to cry. She doesn't like anyone to watch. Spot them yet, Mickey? Nope. Take her up another thousand. We can use that cloud for a blanket. Yeah. Like the gay old times, huh, Mickey? Better. That was for glory. This is for getting rich. <laughs> A half-million-buck payroll floating in the sky like a little bird. Just waiting for us to knock it off. And Anderson promised us the drumsticks. Twenty grand's worth. A man could get fat chewing on a thing like... Haze off your wing, Joe. Ten o'clock. Uh-huh. Make a pass. Scare him. I'll signal we want him to land on that island. Uh-huh. Hey, he won't play. Kerry Martin's a hero. I've got some for heroes. <laughs> We don't want to kill him. Just keep him and his plane on ice. You left out the part about the half million bucks. Like you asked, in the wing. Ah, the boy's good to us, Joe. He's going to belly land her on the beach. Hip, hip, and a hooray. The hero made it. Now we go to Havana, boy, and report to Anderson. Roger Wilco and stuff like that there. Think anyone will find him, Mickey? Before not we... anyone, kid. Just us. That scrap of beats is not even on the charts. It's our secret. Goody. Hey, look at that ocean below us, Mickey. Gorgeous, huh? Hey, what's the matter, kid? Motor gone sour? Both of them. Must be out of gas. They're coking out on me. It's a... Hey, Mickey, what... Oh, we had it in our hands and we're gonna... Come here, sailor. Keep your hands on the wheel. I'm tired of it. We've been running around in circles for half a day. 
Just because a sailor on a passing steamer reported he saw a plane crash in this vicinity. Harry Martin means this much to you, huh? I met him in Europe, Slate. He was shot down. I helped him. He needed me once. A woman doesn't have many opportunities like that. Okay, we'll keep looking. Thanks. Slate, look over there to starboard. Is that a wave crest in the sun, that, that thing shining? Uh, I don't know. That's metal. It's a wing. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It's a wing, Slate. Let's take a closer look, huh? Hey, wait. What? Kerry flew his own plane when he left Miami, and it's a single engine. That's what the telegram said. I don't understand what you're trying to say. But this wing has an cell where it housed an engine. That means it was a two-engine job. It can't be Carrie's plane. Maybe it's an old wreck. Uh-uh. Wrecked planes don't float that long. Maybe Carrie's alive. Uh, can't look any more, sailor. Our fuel is low. You've got to let the authorities know about this wreck. A little while longer. Something's wrong here, but I'll promise you this. If Carrie's alive, we'll find him. <laughs> Got your motor, sailor. Slip her in easy. Aye, aye. Now throw me a line. I'll make her fast. Line. All secure. Bring the chart I drew, sailor. You didn't find him, did you? Huh? No. Ah, look what's here to welcome us home, sailor. The man who orders people off his airstrip. Look, Buster. Uh Uh-uh, this one's on me, Slate. You, get your feet off our pier. And take your mustache with them. You must forgive me for my behavior at the landing field. I was the victim of a grave concern. I didn't know then, Miss Duval, how intimate you were with Carrie Martin. You know, you've got a talent for saying the wrong thing. Not intimate. Just a boy I knew once. I give you that to make the goodbye easier. You're getting off cheap. And now, goodbye. Now, please, you must hear me out. I am John Anderson, resident manager for the Toledo Canneries. That boy was flying in a half-million-dollar payroll. You hear? Half a million. Was he now? Go cry on your insurance agent, then both your stomachs can flutter together. Toledo Canneries is ready to pay any price you ask to find Martin, within reason, of course. You want the boy or the money? And why do I ask a stupid question when I know the answer? Oh, you underestimate our humanity, Miss Duval. We want Kerry Martin. He was a loyal employee, intrepid. A man of know-how. You finally think of the right answer, and then you go and spoil it. Intrepid know-how. Uh, we learned from the authorities the plane you found wasn't Martin's. Continue your search. Find him. And we will show our gratitude in any manner you wish. Within reason. We'll search for him. We'll find him. But not for any reason you'd understand. Take that back to your company. Maybe they can put it up in cans. I would have preferred that... Uh... Well, just notify me when you do. Please. Goodbye, you two. Take me home, Slate. Sure, I'll have King fix you something special. It'll make you feel better. Over here, Anderson. The two suckers bite. (laughs) It's a mission with them, Matt. A grail. Huh? Talk down to me because I'm stupid. Oh, they'll find him for me. For nothing. All you do is go where they go. I'll arrange it. And put a half million bucks in your lap, huh? For that, you'd do something for me, huh? I've already told you. Two thousand. Not a penny more. Nah, not money, stupid. Just a word that says I can kill them when I'm through with them. Hmm. I like you, Matt. You can kill them. Thank you very much, Mr. Anderson. Miss Sailor, she had a friend so true, a man who went in the yonder so blue. In a flying machine, he had no fears. On account of this, drove Miss Sailor to tears. This man, he swooped from Miami to see Miss Sailor flying Romeo he. But he didn't arrive, hasn't done it yet. Now, Miss Sailor, she worry and fret. Yeah, that about sums it up, King. Where's Miss Sailor now, Mr. Slate? On the patio, worrying and fretting. You go look some more for this Kerry Martin? Yeah. One of Bold Ventures' motors has reverse gear trouble as soon as it's fixed. 
Why don't you go put an arm around Miss Salo and say, there, there. And I tried it. She didn't even know I was standing beside her. Oh, she got company now. Huh? Yeah, I wonder where she found him. Slate, 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 look who I found. This is Carrie Martin? This is Pablo. Tell him, Pablo. I am Pablo. I find a man. He said the name Kerry Martin belonged to him. Yeah, where'd you find him? I have a chart of Tortuga's key. I will put a pencil mark where I find him. It's so small it is. Okay, okay. Tell me how it happened. I am Pablo. I am fisher. I take boat to place in Tortugas where I fish. There is airship on beach, standing on nose. Carrie must have crash landed. He's all right. It's not so. He have in him great hurt. Hard to talk. He is too big for small me to carry. Say his name. Say name of Sailor Duval. This name I know because all of Havana know name Sailor Duval. I come. Why didn't you go to the police? I am Pablo. Once I talk to police, I am in jail for two years after that. I am Pablo who does not talk to police. You go to man in Tortuga's key, senor? Yeah, we go. Hurry, Slate. Easy, baby. We know where he is now. I'm taking it to him as fast as I know how. I'm sorry. I just can't. I know. He needed you once. He needs you again. Pablo said he was badly hurt. I'll do what I can, sailor. He'll be all right. He'll see you again, and it'll help make him all right. Look, Slate, I told you. Carrie was just a guy who... Here, I'll, I'll give you a hand aboard. Thanks. Just a nice guy who wanted to be friends. Well, tell me about it later. Right now, we got company. You, Anderson, and your friend off my boat, I won't ask you again. No, just a minute, Mr. Shannon. Uh, this is Matt, one of our employees, and he's at your disposal. That means I'll help, Mr. Shannon. I and Carrie Martin work for the same company. If you're so anxious, Anderson, why don't you go hire your own searching party? Leave us alone. If I did that, the Caribbean would swarm with fortune hunters. Their palms itching for all that money. Martin's flight was a secret. And we'd like to keep the finding of him that way, too. Yeah, I see what you mean. They might kill Martin, take... Exactly. Matt could be of great help in preventing that. And for nothing. Well, I could use an extra hand. Okay with you, sailor? The more the merrier. Let him come, Slate. Okay, Matt, just take my orders and we'll get along real good. Gee, thanks. You'll see, Mr. Shannon. I'm going to help you like anything. The way I do it, you'll never get over it. stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren McCall and the second act of our story. How deep now, sailor? Six feet. Steady. Now four. Cut the motor, Slate. Okay. It's just the other side of the cove. I'll go on ahead. Sure, sailor. I understand. It's not that. It's just I said I understand. So don't explain it to me. Go on. Jump. I told you before, Slate. I gave you a chance to hold his hand for a minute alone. You blew it. Get the medicine kit, Matt. Aye, aye, Skipper. I got it, Skipper. Hey, I glum on lingo good, don't I, Mr. Shannon? You're a good seaman, Matt. Let's go. After you, sailor. The plane didn't look too banged up. Maybe Carrie's not as badly hurt as that fisherman said. We'll know in a little while. And maybe the half million come out of it all right, too. I crossed my fingers. Huh? What do you say, Matt? Oh, you know how it is, Mr. Shannon. A guy works for a cannery. He tries to think the way he thinks a cannery wants him to think. In my heart, I pray Mr. Martin's in good health. I pray that... Forget it. You better run, Mr. Shannon. I wouldn't want to think that I was the... Just court... run. And don't drop that kit. Carrie, Carrie, it's all right. Carrie. Now, don't call him anymore, sailor, because he's not here. He has to be. 
If he was hurt, how, how could he get away? Maybe he crawled to the other side of the island, thought he'd find help. Maybe someone picked him up. And took the dough, because that's not here, too. Uh, you know that, because that's the first thing you looked for, wasn't it, Matt? It was a short prayer, huh? Oh, Skipper, you said yourself you wanted the girl to be alone with him for a minute. We've got to find him, Slate. He, he could be dying. Now, don't cry till you know what for, sailor. Oh, tide washed his footprints away. It's a small island. We could split up. Stop picking my brain. We'll split up. You go that way, Matt, the south end of the island. My favorite direction. You got a preference, sailor? East. That leaves me north. If we don't find him, we meet here. Oh, uh, don't forget the way back, sailor. <laughs> Can you hear me? Martin. That you, Shannon? You get lost, kid? Not me. You're supposed to be casing the south end of this island. Well, I started that way, then I got worried. Maybe you'd find that dough and I'd be far away. Things like that. That money really bothers you, doesn't it? Ever since Pop taught me how to beat the pay telephones, he used to bring them home by the dozens. And you work for a big outfit like Toledo Canneries, huh? Well, I'll tell you. A guy works for a place, troubleshoots, makes a salary. Gets to sniffing a half million, he gets downright disloyal. I guess I'm what you'd call disgusted. You trying to sell me something? You bought it, baby. You won too many on this island. Look, I take out a knife, then I point knife upward for ripping and rip. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, hold it close to your body. Uh, uh, you're breaking my arm. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> Now, dream about what I told you. Oh. I couldn't bother with you, Matt. On second thought, I'll need your shirt to tie you up. And I'll find Carrie. <laughs> Guy gets hurt, sailor. He tries to dream his pain away. Let me touch you again. Don't try to move, Carrie. I'll come closer to you. See? I'm really here. How did you come? On downy wings? Slate and I have a boat. A fisherman told us... Slate? You... He's my guardian, Slate Shannon. There was a shadow in the dream. Now I know his name. Slate's at the other end of the island looking for you. May he never find me. There are three of us. Slate, a man from the company. Anderson. Someone named Matt. Good old Matt. Never heard of him, but good old Matt. What happened to you, Carrie? What went wrong? Bandits. You mean bandits like... I mean like in the war. They shot holes in my wing. Shot up my rudder. Forced me down. I crash-landed. I was very happy till something in my chest told me my chest was caved in. Why did they do that to you? Shh, big top secret. Half a million dollar payroll. But it wasn't a secret. Gary, all this time with that hurt. The money, I, I buried it under the plane. Take it away. Give it to somebody. Gary. Shh, I, I sleep now. Gotta sleep. Carrie, it's beginning to rain. We've got to get you. Martin! Martin! Over here, Slate. Over here. How is he, sailor? He's asleep. We've got to move him, Slate. The rain... No, we can't move him. He's hurt too bad. Here, cover him with my coat. He leaves. Now don't crack up on me, sailor. We'll get help. A doctor. He'll be all right. Okay? Let's go. Can you lift it, Slate? Yeah, the box is not that heavy. <laughs> if you could weave, sailor, you could make us a couple of raincoats. I've never had one made out of $20 bills. 
You sure were underprivileged, weren't you? All the other kids in my block had them. Come on. Let's get the bold venture moving and get some help for Carrie. What about Matt? I left him in a hollow. If it rains hard, the hollow's liable to fill up. Maybe he can drink himself out of it. Yeah, give you a hand up. Okay. Let's take off, Slate. Now what? I don't know. I'll take a look. Hey, sailor. What? Both carburetors going probably on the bottom of the ocean. Matt must have done it before he caught up with me. And this is turning out to be a gay afternoon. Well, let's get back ashore. Grab that flashlight. It's getting dark. I'll take the money. Okay. Why didn't you leave the money aboard? In case we have callers. In case people who don't have... Wait a minute. Listen. You hear it? Yeah, sure. It's a plane. Wave the flash. Maybe we'll get home faster than we think. He sees us. He's landing. That guy can handle that ship. Look at him. He'll be able to take Carrie back. That's you, Shannon? Hey, it's Mr. Anderson. Yeah, it's me with Mr. Val. Oh, good. Start running, sailor. There he is, Slate. Martin. Martin, are you awake? You don't have to talk, yeah. Carrie. That's right. Now, just listen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. John Anderson just landed a plane. He'll help. No, he won't. If he finds you, he'll kill you. But Anderson... Don't talk, Carrie. We'll explain it to you later. He's looking for all of us. If he comes close to you, don't move. If he calls to you, don't answer. Make out you're dead. Do you understand? Yes. Understand. We'll come back for you. Sure, sure. I don't worry about anything. It'll be all right. Let's go, sailor. Where are we going? Get rid of this money. We're going to bury it? Uh Uh-huh. We're going to give it away. There's the hollow, sailor. There's something in it. That would be Matt. I brought you something, Matt. Do good die. That's no way to talk. We brought you half a million dollars. It's soggy from the rain, Matt, but you won't mind. Your hot breath will dry it out. Hey. That's right. Anderson landed a little while ago. This knife says don't answer him. Talk soft. Anderson made it, huh? You two pigeons are in trouble. How'd he find this island? In Havana, when you were getting your boat ready for this haul. You stepped ashore for coffee, remember? That's when we come aboard and nuzzled your charts. Anderson flies a plane accurate. (laughs) He's got a loud voice, too. I don't blame you, Matt. If that knife was sticking me, I'd go out, too. Okay, okay. What's with the money? What are you trying to say? You want to look at it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. All right. Open it, sailor. The man on that $20 bill winked at you, Matt. Oh, pretty, pretty. It's all yours. What about him? He'll find you in a few seconds, then you can chat about the money. Me? Tied up like this? He'll kill me. I know him. He's double-crossed his company. He'll do it to me. I'll put this knife in your hands. You can saw your way out. Matt! Let's get out of here, Slate. Yeah. Here I am, Anderson. Got the money right here. Help me get out. In cold blood, Slate. Shannon! Can you hear me, Shannon? I'm going to be on your back in a second. You rot here, Shannon. You and your... Not me, John boy. uh, You made a mistake, Slate. Pardon me. Uh, You won't get out alive. You betting? (laughs) Come out from behind that tree, sailor. I haven't got time to pat your cheek. Let's get help for Carrie. Sure, with this gun in back of Anderson's head, that plane will get help here in an hour. I'll say it again, Slate. It's been a gay day. It's almost over. Let's go take a ride in an airplane. Slate. 
Uh-huh. Carrie just called me again from the hospital. He says he feels great. Oh, I'm glad. He had a message for you. He wanted to know if it was all right for me to have a date with him when he gets well. What have I got to do with it? Well, I told him you were, uh, like a daddy to me. Oh. Sailor. Uh-huh. Come here, little girl. Sit on my knee. Like this? That's fine. What do you want, Daddy? What do little girls do before they run along to play? This. Do I have to run along and play? I feel so grown up. <laughs> And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. 